Welcome to another episode of the Inside the Bull Heads podcast with your hosts Marius and Ska. Hopefully you learn something new, hopefully you enjoy it, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Marius, another one. Another one. <laughs> yep. So another. yeah, Inside the Bull's Head, that's the first episode of this year, I think, recorded. Technically, yes. Yeah, yeah. Theoretically, yes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought about starting with something interesting, something okay. you might not know. Tell me. The history of high heels. High heels? High heels. What do you mean by high heels? Female high heels. Shoes. Oh, shoes, okay. Right. The starting point, it was uh, a fashion item for men. Okay. I've, so, I've seen it, I think, in movies yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And females who would wear high heels. Were losers. Actually, they were considered masculine. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. look how, how, how things, things turned around. around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. The point I'm trying to make is if you want to understand something, go to the root of it. Right. That's a good you can thing. look today and yeah. like, oh, that's a female thing. But if you go back in history, you might figure out it's yeah, so you actually, completely different. You should actually start wearing heels again. Yep. Make heels great again. Let's go. Okay. What's the first thing that we should talk about today? Um, I was thinking about dieting, metabolism, calories, and where should you invest your effort? What okay. do you think? More specific, which one and why? So we have a couple of stuff that influence our metabolism. <laughs> that's the, the word. That's yeah. The, uh, the M word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the wrong side and then move to being more like a positive part. Most people focus on exercise, train more, do more cardio, blah, blah, blah. It's not a bad idea, but I wouldn't invest my money on it. You know, exercise is very limited. You cannot out exercise a bad diet almost ever. Okay. Your body sizes account for 60% of the calories you burn. I will bet my money on that. It's not guaranteed, but it's a safe bet, right? More cells in your body consumes more energy, right? I will bet on that if I want to diet in the future, right? What do you think? Yes, but still, like, just to make it clear for the people that are listening, like, basically to get more cells, so to say, to get bigger, you still need to train, but uh, you just need to think of both factors, so to say. You need to address your food intake and just the way that you view the food that you use. Is it just fuel for your body? Is it just fuel for your performance in the gym? Or is it a way that you basically like try to slim your body into that little slim thing that you have in your head and the training wise, like, are you just having a goal of 40 minutes per workout of burnt calories, or are you actually like going after very strict and certain results? Like, I don't know, I want to live that much. I want to do that much and things like that. Yeah. To be honest, I don't want to seem like a person that goes against the grain saying like people do everything wrong even if you are exercising with this which is a great thing you're still doing it wrong no if you're exercising that's great but i will use exercise as a tool for something else right cardiovascular health amazing muscle mass amazing i wouldn't exercise just to burn calories i think it creates more frustration than anything else i mean how far can you go with that yeah, you good. consume, you burn 200, your aim is five and then 600 and then 700 and then a thousand, then what you spend the whole day burning calories. You like know, that's not a good thing to do. Go ahead. You know what that looks like? It's basically, if you look in the gym and there are those, uh, I mean, you can actually start seeing people like working out with the towel and like isometrics and stuff. And I'm like, that's all right. That's something good to do. When you're at home because you have COVID or you can't exit your home or something like that, and you need to do something. And yeah, okay, maybe a towel comes in handy or like isometrics and stuff like that. But if you come to the, if you actually like, you put gas into your car or you pay somebody to take you to the gym, do something efficient because you could have done that same thing in your home. Yeah. And you just lose time, you lose money. It's not efficient at all. Yeah, it's like when you go to a restaurant and order something you can cook home. Basically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 
if you don't have access to certain things, home, go to the gym and do something different. When comes go times goes around and you are in lockdown, you're running out of time, you're in traveling, whatever, then maybe you can use certain tools. But when you have the possibility, just take advantage of something that is somehow more optimal, right? So yeah, basically it's just use your time, use your effort, use your money as efficient as possible. Because for example, I always told this to my clients, you don't have to come to the gym to do cardio. You can do cardio anywhere. Is it a bit easier to track if you come to the gym? Yes. If you know that you are accountable enough to go for a 40 minute run around the lake that's near your house and you like it more, do that. Like it's completely okay, but just be as efficient as possible. Yes. I mean, let's make a clear point. Okay. We're not saying don't do cardio or don't, ex don't exercise or something. Of course, we want you to do that. Just have in mind the purpose, purpose behind it, right? don't exit again i'm repeating myself too much don't train to burn calories but just think about something that is probably more important in the long term right it's like exercise for like a a higher goal in a way right um another thing that i notice a lot people go into a diet trying to lose fat of course while not being as healthy as they can yeah that's because an unhealthy body doesn't operate the same way it's like it's like your body is like a factory we say this all the time but how good the factory is will dictate how efficient your body is in extracting or using energy right if you're not healthy to start with going into a diet won't fix everything so you want to make sure that you are healthy first you're in a good spot to start a diet especially mentally and then you can get started otherwise frustration can hit you you would just start looking at the scale. You just go frustrated and so on and so forth. Uh, you have anything to add about that? Yeah, basically what people don't get is that going into a diet is adding another stress to your body. Mm. And if your body is already stressed because it's not healthy enough, so to say, adding more stress to it won't necessarily help. And uh, maybe it will go to some results for some people, but bad wouldn't it be nicer before going to a trip with the car to just be sure that the car is like intact, <laughs> it can get those 500 kilometers done with no problem yeah. and then go like that's the better strategy, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. What about somebody that said, Hey, Myers, not looking the way I want makes me stress too, right? I'm not feeling good about myself, even though I'm not as healthy as I can be. I need to diet so I can look better, so I can feel better. And I understand you. That's completely okay. Just make sure that when things get a little bit more complicated, paying attention to your health will reward you even more, right? It's like, it's okay to step, to take a step back, to take five steps forward, yeah, right? Taking a diet break, right? Eating at maintenance for a while, even a little bit sometimes on a, on a surplus restore your health, your hormones, your state of mind that will have reward, not today, maybe, but a couple of weeks from now, you know, so don't be afraid to take a step back, to take five forward. And what uh, we can go from here to basically like the bigger image, so to say, mm. uh, cause the diet phase, the dieting phase shouldn't last that much because maybe you're dieting right now to hit a certain, I don't know, like body fat percentage or stuff like that. But long term if your only goal is losing fat you basically playing against yourself why another analogy <laughs> why focus on spending as little and as little and as little as possible when you actually work like a bit more intelligent or smart and get a bigger paycheck and afford more stuff like that would be way easier long term because basically you don't want to i don't know like look better for this summer and then like hate your life for another nine months and then three months of okay-ish life and all that cycle again and again and again. Yeah. Just diet a bit if you need to, get yourself to a more comfortable body fat percentage. Yeah. And after that, let's focus on what's the word, building up that tank, so to say, because it's yeah. going to be way yeah. more rewarding. Yeah. Just to make sure people know, we're not here to tell them exactly what to do, right? Uh, certain protocols can be great for somebody and just the worst thing ever for another person. So we're not asking people to have our goals or be just forced to do something we want them to do. You know, 
uh, all we are saying is that um, when you start any journey, once you end it or while you're into it, maybe you have to rethink why you started at first, right? It's like maybe you weren't feeling great about yourself, but along the way, you're going to discover things about yourself, right? You start questioning, why did I start dieting in the first place? S some people do it for the wrong reason. You know, some people can trade their bodies with yours now, instantly, you know? So maybe it's in your head. Maybe you're too stressed, you know? Maybe <clears throat> you're dieting for a wrong reason, who knows? So don't be afraid to question why you're doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, basically that's it. Like you just, I don't know, like, I can't put it better than you did, so I'm not gonna Thank waste you. the minute, so that. to say. Okay. What about five meals a day, six meals a day, 10 meals a day increases your metabolism? What do you think? I'd say that uh, for the average population, it's more of a question as it's more of a question of how well can i stick to it because uh, do you get like a i don't know three percent benefit on doing that daily maybe does karen who's a 35 year old mom of a, i don't know like one year old and basically almost has no time for herself is that something practical for herself I don't think so. Like people would say that eating two times per day and a snack would be not adequate. I agree, but if she can control her breakfast because the little guy is still not up and she can control her last meal of the day because it's dependent when, on the moment when the little guy went to sleep. If those are the only two meals that she can actually control, let's focus on making those meals as perfect as possible let her snack something in between, anything, but just for her to eat something because it's healthy and stuff. And after that, maybe in a year or two, when the kid's growing, she's getting more time for herself, she'll be able to resolve naturally, so to say, a problem like that. But just to impose on her the idea of five meals per day, because it's very healthy and it helps your metabolism, it's just impractical as hell for me. I like the word unpractical and that gets me into why we started this in the first place. And I think it's some practitioners to blame. I don't think the general person, like the normal person think they should eat an X number of meals to achieve certain things. It was written on the blog post back in the day or in a diet book or on social media or something. People don't think about it this way somebody ingrained this idea into somebody and forcefully try to promote it in a way, you know? So if anybody's giving advice without any context, you shouldn't give advice. There is no such thing as five or two or one meal a day or 10 meals a day. There is no such thing. Look at your client's schedule. Look at their lifestyle. Look at their food tolerance, food choices what they like to do during the day. You design that around them. You always design a program around your client. And not the other way around. The there you go. The client shouldn't mold himself on your workout, on, on your diet yes. plan, so to say, just because it's perfect. Like, yes. okay, maybe the structure is perfect. Like maybe you got the perfect ratio of yeah. X to Y, but still we need to manipulate the way that the X's and the Y's are applied to this certain person. Yes. Sometimes practitioners selfishly think that people have nothing to do in a day, but to follow their exercise routine and diet. It's like, how can you prescribe this X number of meals a day in a couple of hours of exercise? People work. Some people have nine to five. Some people have nine to six. Some people work night shifts, Families. right? Yes. You have kids, you have husbands, you have wife. I mean, you have to consider that. And basically I'd say that that's a thing that only mediocre uh, practitioners assume because even let's say you or me or somebody like that, I don't know, like I got to the point where I understood very quickly that I can't spend as much time on my workouts, even though I love them and I love working out, Yeah. but I need to become as efficient as possible because yeah. I have stuff to do. And I can't, I literally can't stay more than a an hour or 10 and 20 minutes in the gym. Mm -hmm. And 
Does this mean to superset stuff, to choose an exercise over to another, just because it hits both of those goals, so to say? Yeah. Yeah, and we could apply that to other people, basically. Yes, I agree. I agree. I mean, even us that somehow do this for a living, and look, things get busy, <laughs> yeah. and you have to be efficient, and you miss meals, and you miss workouts sometimes. We try not to compromise, but Balance. we understand everybody. Yeah. You know, I understand everybody. Um, let's drift a little bit into some uh, training stuff. Okay. Right. Um, let's talk about exercise selection. Also, I heard that you started training again. Ah, come on. Don't get me started. Uh, no, I'm still rehabbing. Yeah, but you, uh, you stepped into a real gym. I stepped into a real gym and... Uh, I got you on video. You can't, you can't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know what it is i think you know that you have a true friendship when you push a workout regardless yeah but with <laughs> you it's quite it's quite complicated because if i push it too much then you can't make it to the second workout and i don't like that so <laughs> yeah it needs to be like very well dosed yeah 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 um so we were about to talk about basically how we would uh, select uh, certain exercises based on a person's needs, so to say, mm -hmm. based on a person's context. I think you should first consider what hurts and spend the least amount of time in a position that hurts you. My <laughs> <laughs> People actually charge you money for that, so... Yeah. Uh, no, there is this strange mechanism in the human body. When something hurts you, you keep on checking on the pain over and over again. It's like, okay, let me flex my arm or let me move my back or my yeah. neck and see if it's still hurting. And you keep hurting yourself the whole day, yeah, yeah. you know? And then you become sensitized to pain and the pain never leaves you again, you know? So I, sometimes it's so difficult. To, it's so simple, but so difficult. Just try to spend the least amount of time under pain. So that's number one thing, right? And then to be honest, if you are if you are alone, you're not with somebody, um, check yourself, try different exercises. And first of all, stop doing what hurt you the first place, right? If you were under a barbell, if you were using certain machines that didn't fit you well, and guess what? Your body knows, right? Your body knows how you hurt it. Your body knows what you did. So just stay away. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be pretty simple. If we do it again, it's going to yeah. work more. So yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, we can go into more complicated stuff, testing range of motions, blah blah blah. I don't think it's, this is yeah, the scope of somebody else. Uh, so yeah, mm, you take it from there. Uh, so yeah, basically, if we do get back to the how do we. Yeah, you got no water because I we we changed the setup, so we got no water. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying, we were thinking about how uh, how we should select exercise based on somebody's needs, and uh, what some people don't understand, I'd say, is the fact that everything is not everything, but everyone is very different. Like even if two people like got the same strength they train for the same they got the same training age and things, things like that let's say that somebody has longer femurs or stuff like that if you try to somehow mold them into that i don't know like into the squat so to say and for them it's just impossible to get that torso upright let's say that they got a very long torso or something like that yeah they'll be able to progress that movement but how much, like how much will they be, will they actually be able to progress it without other things entering the question, so to say, and just making them fail there. So why not give them something more appropriate for their structure, even though the squat is a great exercise, but not for them. That's the whole thing, because we're not saying that the squat is a shitty exercise. We're saying that the squat is not as good as a maybe hex squat or something like that for somebody with a very with very big limbs and stuff like that i agree i agree i think i have an analogy for this uh have you ever 
worn tight shoes before. I think so. Like, yeah. So you wear the tight shoes and you walk with them and then they get looser and they feel comfortable. Yeah. Imagine then the next day you just wear another layer of socks on top of that and then keep on walking again. It's going to hurt you again. And then they become looser. And then you add another layer of socks, you know, and almost you just keep on somehow loading a bad exercise over and over and over yeah. again. Maybe you get comfortable with the weight because it's just hurt less. Or you right? just got, or you just yes. got used to the hurt. So yes. And then you add, add more load and then you keep on doing it and then you get comfortable. So you somehow working against yourself, right? Uh, I think most people know when an exercise is not feel uncomfortable, but they don't want to think again about it because everybody's doing the same thing and people are afraid mm -hmm. of doing something different. Again, I don't want to go into the creativity side of exercises in which you don't know what you're doing and then you're yeah. trying to make up something that just looks different. Okay. Let the context make you do something different rather than making something different out of context. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, I think this is the point that I wanted to make. If I'm being too abstract, just no, let me okay. know. I think okay, okay. I want to be as precise as I can be. I just um, try to like, I think that the most important thing that most of all trainers and coaches should understand, but also people, cause it's not something very complicated is that every exercise or movement that we do in the gym has the function of actually, let's say activating something that something could be activated, let's say in five more ways. So if way one doesn't work for you, there are four more ways. And if that coach or friend or anybody is forcing and like hammering you into doing that one way for that end result, it's wrong. And basically it's not even ethical, so to say, because yeah, that worked for them. It got them great results, but you are not them and they need to adjust for you. And, uh, it's basically like, let's use another analogy. We need to hammer, uh, how do you call it? Nail? Uh, a nail. Yeah. Okay. You got a hammer, you got the thing with which you can cut stuff, like let's say different metal. Let's say you have five tools, right? <laughs> yeah, like, let's use that. You have a hammer and four more tools. The four other tools are for gardening. You could use all those tools to hammer the nail, but which one is going to be the easiest and the more efficient? And just let's think that you can hurt yourself with the other tools if you hit incorrectly or something like that. Yeah. That goes into the gym as well. Like it's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a very viable point because probably somebody will hear us talking and like you're preaching this mechanic thing, or you're doing an exercise a certain way. You're trying to make things complicated. Maybe you want to look different or more knowledgeable, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Right. What we are trying to do is this, you can pick a bad exercise and bad. I don't really mean bad, let's say bad for you, yeah. right? Something that doesn't work well for you. Let's say 20% efficient, right? I can make an exercise that is 80% efficient. And instead of doing five sets of that, you can do two of that. And you're just good. free 20 minutes probably. Yeah. So, and you end up with healthier joints, let's say. Isn't it worthwhile pursuit, yeah, like why not right? That? Like if somebody walks to you, like if you invest this amount, you get five times, 10 times the reward. Would you do it? If they present you with another option that probably makes you lose money or have like a 1% reward, like who would yeah, go for that? that? Right? So this is what we are trying, whether in nutrition, whether in training, how can we find something that is more efficient and that it works better? That's it the intricacies of that can be more complex. That's our job, right? Yeah. The application can be simpler, but the back work can be a little bit more complicated, you know? So goal is efficiency. That's what we're trying to do. That's it. That's why engineering sometimes is complicated. You can hold the phone that can do so many things that require a lot of tech. You didn't design the tech, but you can use the phone still. That's the almost that's that's the relationship between, for example, us and our clients. You know, we do like 
the back work and they can just apply and we communicate yeah you know and uh, another point talking about exercises please if anybody's working with another person if something doesn't feel right tell them tell them it hurts tell them it doesn't feel comfortable just let them know because i know some people just have Go some pain, ego yes yeah. yeah, like they think it sh- should hurt or should be uncomfortable maybe yes but not in your joints let's say not when you cannot wake up the next day right so if you feel any discomfort just let the person know yeah i just had an interest an interesting interaction with a new client because uh, he had like multiple trainers or like he he's been into it so to say for a while and uh, he got to me and we we're just talking about how the workout would go and stuff like that and uh, he's got shoulder pain and it's actually not that serious but it got him in pain actually like on the first set of pressing a dumbbell with like 40 percent or something like that which is kind of not a great situation so to say and uh, he kept like telling me about how he was um, working out with this volleyball coach and doing this uh, body weight drills which were interesting and <laughs> in my mind i was like okay <laughs> Like, I just sometimes don't get the thought process be- which people use because, okay, the thing was interesting, but it got you to shoulder pain and you didn't learn anything. Like, doesn't that pop a few pop? Yeah, pop a few yeah. light bulbs or something like that. But of course, that's my job to do. Yeah. But uh, it's just the conclusion out of it is that if you're working with somebody and you actually exiting that experience with no extra knowledge or even words with minus health points so to say that should be a red flag like that should be something that you look you look for yes That's yes i mean i've been coached by a lot of coaches in sports playing basketball a bunch of them okay and this is what they have in common if you want to excel in any sports, you have to work hard, the hardest, right? If something bad happens to you, it's on you. You didn't sleep well, or you didn't eat well, or you were partying, or you're not made for the sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's never the coach's uh, mistake or problem. It's, n- it's never uh, the dose of the training. It's never... Uh, the protocol or the warm up or designing th- something that works for you. It's you. If you get injured, it's you. And a lot of people exit the sports with the same thought, right? If something happens bad, it's on you, right? So they think that that's the right way to do it. It's just they're not made for that specific thing. And- so I think that it all goes back to accountability. Because uh, if people are not, um, in this case, coaches are not accountable for the results that they produce and, for example, for the athletes or for the client's health in uh, a way as, for example, let's say somebody works with LeBron James or something like that. If that person can make LeBron James stay on the basketball court for like two extra games, he wins extra money, which means that the coach wins extra money. And that's very easy to quantify. So to say. Yeah. For most people, it's actually, I work with 30 kids or with 30 high school goers, something like that. And I just know my thing. If something happens, it's their fault. Meanwhile, yeah. it doesn't go like that. Because yeah. even I, when I was playing football, uh, I didn't have major injuries or something like that. But I did spray in pretty badly once my ankle and I got introduced on the, how do you call it, on the stadium uh, with it still not, maybe like an 80%, yeah. something like that. And after that, I was somehow blamed for a mistake that I did. Meanwhile, I was feeling that I was moving in slow motion because I was still not sure about my yeah. ankle. Yes. Like, yeah, okay, I'm biased because it's my, uh, it's my story, so to yeah. say, but that thing it's keep it's keep it's happening again and again and yeah. basically until it gets to a certain level yeah um it happened to me a lot of times i, I played games in which 
I couldn't walk properly, let alone run and perform, right? And to be honest, I wouldn't blame the coach 100%. I played a role in that because I pushed to play, you know, young, ambitious, whatever. You want to show your toughness. and Because the closest thing to military is sports, yeah, basically. right? It's like the closest thing to combat and camaraderie and just beating them and doing all the stuff, you know? There is a lot of excitement that comes with that. But then looking back at it, I think um if coaches and players will communicate a little bit more hence coaches and trainees communicating at the gym more yeah. not only about sets and reps but also how they feel how exercise affect them during the day right are they sore all the time they cannot walk properly like you have to keep like a checklist with your client right uh if you don't have a trainer keep a checklist for yourself you know um, if you oh, feel like you're over, overdosing, yeah. yeah, just back off a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's basically just being as honest, either with yourself, either with your trainer, because just keeping it in yourself and somehow just bullying your body into doing more stuff, even though you're in pain, yeah. it's just going to go like one, two, maybe three more sessions until you can't do that thing at all. And then you're going to have to force stuff. So not getting anywhere. Yeah, I want us to record uh, an episode on how to be a good client. A good client? Oh, yeah. That's interesting. yeah. <laughs> Look, there is a learning curve for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a coach, you have to learn how to be a good coach. Also, you are as good as your client. You can be the best, but if your client doesn't communicate with you well, uh, they're too picky, complain too much, find a lot of excuses, because you want to use the whole time into making the other person better, not trying to make them comply all the time. Yeah. You know, it's like when your mom is trying to figure out a way for you to make, to do your homework, you know, and it never works. So the best kid is a motivated kid. The best client is a motivated client. Yeah. So, yeah. So how to be a good client that works. And we're going to get feedback from people, how to be a better coach. And that's how we roll. Yeah. So, uh, a very, what's the word, a very interesting interesting and uh, enjoying, rewarding moment <laughs> for uh, us as coaches is when uh, the people that we work with start actually not just doing a good job at what they do, but they actually start thinking another way and uh, they see and they can actually see where the wrong information is or the right information is. And they basically start making better choices because of that. Like either nutrition wise, either training wise, when you see somebody and it happened with myself, like without you telling them anything, just explaining them the stuff that you need to explain or answering any questions. And in free time, in free months, they actually start questioning other stuff in the gym and like, isn't that odd or why are they doing that? Isn't that wrong or something like that? Without you having to tell them that that's wrong, that's really rewarding at least. Like, what do you think? Um, I agree with you. I think it's uh, it's a selfish thing, yeah. to be honest. Totally. You know, I think it's the not the closest thing, but quite close to seeing your, uh, let's say, kid you know doing the right choices in a way right like they are on their own yeah, yeah. questioning what other people are doing making sense of it and choosing to do the right thing right so that's extremely rewarding actually because you feel like you just save somebody out of danger right? yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they can survive by themselves uh, is the um, it's like planting the right seed in somebody else and them being able to use it for their own good, for their own good. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know, we don't gain anything from that, but just looking at it, it's like, it's like evolution. It's like, I don't know. It just feels weird. Somebody is enlightened because of you in a way, you know, and, uh, that exceeds any probably monetary gains that you can get. Yeah. Basically, you know? Yeah. yeah. Because that's something stays with them. Yeah, it's basically just the fact that at least we try to be professional. And yeah. even if you see something wrong in the gym, 
I don't know how other people do, but I'm not pointing at it. Like in my mind, maybe. Practically, no. I'm just like, okay, it's there. It happens. But when uh, the people that you work with are like, okay, like we work for like three months together, six months, they start having more knowledge in this whole gym room yeah. and stuff like that. And they're like, hmm, isn't that like a bit weird or isn't that a bit useless or like why are they doing the band stuff on the floor like there is a very cool machine near them like yeah. they could do that at home and they're like that's it yeah 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 that's the thinking good <laughs> yeah exactly it's like sometimes why would you train stability and on the unstable surface yeah you know like so many things we we, we train endurance to have endurance, we train strength to become strong, and then we train instability to be to become stable. Or something Seems like, like that. odd enough, right? So once people starting questioning certain things, it's like why, 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 and understanding the why again, um, I encourage everybody to ask. Right. Yeah, anything. Look, whether you are at, at your job, at school, working with somebody, consulting with a doctor, it doesn't matter always ask why right the worst case scenario is you figure out that you're working with the wrong person the best case scenario you learn something new win -win. boom that's win -win it situation for all, everybody. yep i think we will leave people with this yeah i think like good. a pretty good, good advice yeah. here uh they can just take it apply it um wish everybody good luck and a good start of a year and um Peace. And, uh, one thing we are seeing a good start of the year, but this is like episode six or something, and we still yeah. got three more to post. So it's going to be a bit later the year, but still yeah. good luck. In the uh, year. One more thing. Thank you everybody for their feedback. feedback yeah. uh, please talk louder. <laughs> please mention this, reduce the echo. We listen, we try to do better we and just... keep it coming. Yeah. Boom. Okay, guys, that's gonna be a wrap. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Any kind of advice, any kind of feedback, any kind of topics that you'd like us to go over, just send them on Instagram at the fitness practitioner or at train by Marius. And uh, thanks for having us. Until the next one, enjoy the process.